Hi developers, I'm Hossam Deliai, Microsoft MVP. In this video, we'll learn how to log out users from our Xamarin Forms application. Then we'll learn how to check the validity of the access token. We know that the access token has a limited duration. And if we exceed, if we exceed that limited duration, then the server will send back 401 unauthorized. What we do if, in that case, is to issue or to try to get a new access token by sending the username and password of our uh, user. Until now, our application gets the access token inside the login page. So the, the user enters his login and password. Then a web request will be sent to the web server and the web server will respond back by sending an access token. But we, want, we don't want to go through the login page in each time the access token expires. Instead, we'll go just send the HTTP request to the um, login uh, web server. Because we do have the username and password of the user, then we get a new access token, so we store it inside our uh, settings. Let's first start adding the logout button in our Xamarin Forms application. For that here, I'll go to the ideas page. And from here, I'll add a button. When the user clicks on it, he will be logged out and will be redirected to the login page. We'll add that button as a menu tool button. For that, I'll go here after that I have done the uh, binding context then say content page dot menu tool uh, toolbar items then create a new toolbar item that toolbar item will be like a button that uh, have a text the text will say logout and when the user clicks that uh, toolbar item will execute a command so we'll create a new command, we'll do binding, and we'll create a new command that will do logout. We'll call it logout command. Let's go and create this command from our ideas view model. So let's go to the ideas view model. And right here, I'll go and add a new command. It should be a public command. We call it logout command. And this uh, command will have a getter that will return a new command, return a new command. This command will execute a lambda expression. This lambda expression, all it will do is the following. So to do logout, we'll just go and delete the access token, which is stored in our application settings. That means we'll go to our settings and then access the access uh, token and say equal empty. So this way we do deleted the access token stored in our application settings. And with uh, deleting the access token, we need also to delete the username and password of the user. Because if the user did log out, then he won't to delete all his private information from the application. So we'll do the same for the username and password. After doing this, we want the application to go back to the login page so that the user logs in again or a new user will log in again. We'll do that from right here, from the toolbar item. So we define it a command that will delete the values for the access token username and password. And we can also add a click event. Let's call it a logout click. This uh, event handler will will go back to the login page. So it will navigate to the login page. For that, we use the navigation.push 
navigation dot push async then go to the login page this is an asynchronous I need to use the await and async so let's try this let's hit start here I can see my logout button so if I click that button then here I'm redirected back to the login page cool so it's as simple as that now um, let's go to the second part and check the expiration of our access token so let's go back to visual studio and right here let's take a look at our api services class which do all the call to the web services and let's uh, dig into the login async method that will take the username password and try to get an access token from our uh, backend so we get the access token then we get we'll return it back to the color of the method which is inside the view model and that uh, command will register the returned access token now um, if we take a look at the response that we get from the server we get gwt if we take a look at the format of that gwt then we can see that it it's in this format so it contains the access token the value for that access token then it have some other values like here the token type and importantly for us the expires and here it tells us when this access token will expire so here it tells me the date and the hour for the expiration for that access token so let's ex uh, extract this value and save it in our application settings to do that I'll go here and as I have extracted the access token, I don't uh, extract the expiration date for our access token. So let's uh, create another value for that and let's call it access token expiration. Here we'll go and use this dynamic value and try to extract the value for the access token which is here noted as dot expires copy that and then do this once we have get the expiration date um, here actually let's cast it to a date time because that's what it is it's actually a date time then let's uh, save it in our application settings for that let's go to the settings but from within the uh, settings we don't have yet a value to register the expiration of our access tokens so we register just the username password and the access token let's add a new property to register the expiration date for the access token let's call it access token expiration and it should be of type date type and here also we need to change the type to be a uh, date time the default va value will not will be the date time dot now or actually let's use etc dot now uh, here we need to pay attention for the format of the date we are uh, using so you need to check the um, that date sent by your server is it GMT time or what time it is it so here it's sending it in GMT so um, I can write from here say it's uh, compare it with the UTC time then the name for this value will be access token expiration and the same as here access token expiration cool now that we have saved it, that uh, value from within the API services by doing settings dot access token expiration equal our access token expiration so now we know 
when our access token expires. So what we'll do now is to check if that access token will expire within an hour and try if that's the case we'll go and issue another access token. I'll do that from my app.zamo.cs page where here when the app starts I have this method set main page where I choose the first page to be shown on, um, within my application depending if the user have already signed it in then I'll go and show him the, uh, the ideas page and if he's not signed it in then I'll show him the register or the login page. So let's go here. If we want to show the ideas page, then we want to make sure that the expiration token is still valid at least one hour. So why we choose one hour? Let's say that our user, depending, uh, that depends of the type of your application. Here, our application, we think that the user might use the app not more than one hour. So before he starts using the application, we want to make sure that the access token he uses is still valid at least one hour. Let's go and do that here. When we do have an access token, we'll go also and add another step for um, verifying the validity of that access token. So let's go to the settings and get our access token expiration and let's make sure it's uh, still valid for at least one hour by, by com comparing it to the date time dot now. Or actually here we need to verify if it expire within an hour then we'll go and issue a new access token. We can issue a new access token by calling the method that is called by the login page which is here the login command. The login command will go and call the login async passing the username and password then get an access token and register it back uh, right here. So let's call this login command from our app.zaml.cs that login command exists inside our login view model. So we'll go and create a new instance for the login view model. Let's say equal new login view model, then call our view model dot login command. Let's execute the command by calling the method execute. That command doesn't take any parameter right here. So we pass the null uh, right here. Calling this command, we'll go and call this web service, get the access token and register it and also it will register the expiration for that access token as we have done earlier. Great, now when our application starts up, it will check if the access token that we already have is valid for at least one hour and here it go um, perfectly well with the expiration token of our uh, token right here because we here we have set it up to be 14 days and depending on this value if you set this value to one hour then it doesn't make sense to make it right here um, to compare it to be valid for one hour but you, maybe you need to refresh or to get a new access token in every um, 30 minutes, for example. So this is a way to get a new access token and some other applications, uh, they do some other scenarios like they, issue, they uh, send the request and if the user and only if the user responds back by, by telling this is a 401 unauthorized request, then at that time they add a new call to the, web, to the login web service to get a new access token, then um, call back again that uh, web service with the new access token. And that's the worst scenario um, because you are waiting until the expiration of the web token to get a new one. 
what we have done here is a proactive approach. So we verify the expiration of the access token be before it expires. So I hope this video was helpful and thank you.